In the middle of a challenging week, nothing puts my mind at ease quite like a journal, pen, and a warm drink. And maybe a sweet treat. I stopped in at 49th Parallel, a very popular cafe in Vancouver. It's about an hour until closing time. People regularly ask me, what do I even write in my journal? Anything and everything, really. Some days it's random thoughts, stream of consciousness. Other times I'll document a moment, an experience I want to process. It isn't always pretty, and that's okay. Pen friends at Wonder Pens in Toronto put it well in their blog when it comes to beginning a new journal. Don't be concerned about what you're writing about. Ease into it and then go wild. Promise yourself that no one will see it. Know that it will be okay if it is terrible and you can't spell things and your handwriting is awful. It doesn't have to be deep and meaningful. It can be boring and brutal and silly and personal. Just get the words on the page. I couldn't have said it any better than that. I do want to draw a distinction between a notebook or a journal and a planner. My planner is a very precise instrument. It involves time sensitivity and other individuals who are invested in outcomes and process. I work in the field of project management, which requires a lot of note-taking, documentation, and organization. I'm very deliberate with what goes into my planner, whereas I put very little restriction on journaling. Lately, I've been using journaling as a reading log. This month, I'm reading A Hero of Our Time by Mikhail Lermontov a collection of notes from a traveler. Wikipedia describes it as an example of the superfluous man novel. It refers to an individual, perhaps talented and capable, who does not fit into social norms. In most cases, this person is born into wealth and privilege. Typical characteristics are disregard for social values, cynicism, and existential boredom. Typical behaviors are gambling, drinking, romantic intrigues, and duels. He is often unmindful, indifferent, or unempathetic with society's issues and can carelessly distress others with his actions despite his position of power. There is no denying how wonderfully written a hero of our time is. I'm enjoying the romantic descriptions of landscapes, geography, animals, and people. There is a reverence for beauty, particularly the beauty that exists in the natural world that's palpable. This passage, for example, is one I recorded. The dancing choirs of the stars were interwoven in wondrous patterns on the distant horizon, and one after another they flickered out as the wan resplendence of the east suffused the dark lilac vault of heaven, gradually illuminating the steep mountain slopes covered with the virgin snows. To right and left loomed grim and mysterious chasms, and masses of mist eddying and coiling like snakes were creeping thither along the furrows of the neighboring cliffs as though sentient and fearful of the approach of the day. And since we're on the topic of beautiful places of the natural world, it brings me to this fountain pen I've been obsessed with over the last six months. Clearly, Bennu was inspired by the Tahitian island known for its lagoon. The Bennu Euphoria Bora Bora is definitely eye-catching. This turquoise color is just beautiful, with large splotches of gold and silver sparkles suspended in resin is a marvel. It's not the type of pen I reach for on a daily basis, but when I do, I interrogate my life choices and question why I don't use it more. No matter how you view it, something is always glittering back at you when it catches the light. It's faceted symmetrically with clever precision. It features a Schmidt number no. 6 size nib in silver stainless steel. This current nib is medium, which is very juicy and extremely smooth on MD paper. The journal I'm using is the MD Notebook Journal A5 dot grid. It's inked up with Waterman inspired blue. This fountain pen feels really great in the hand. It's not too fat. 
I use it uncapped so it's not too long either. It's very comfortable for long uh, writing stretches thanks to those facets. Here you can see it compared with uh, Twisby Eco, just a little fatter and a slightly longer. It fits in a Superior Labor and Wonder Pens pen case quite comfortably. There's got a little bit of room to spare, I'm able to zip it up and store it away with no problems. I really enjoyed writing with this Banu Euphoria Bora Bora. It's a pleasure to write with. It's such a pleasing experience. And I'm really glad that I picked it up. If you've stuck around this long, I also want to say I really appreciate you. Thank you for viewing. I know that I get a lot of enjoyment and utility out of videos like this on YouTube. They always motivate me to pick up my journal and a pen and just enjoy that experience of putting pen to paper just right. Hopefully it won't be too long before my next video, but until then, thanks for stopping by and happy writing.